Hey, welcome back. So if we're gonna build an AI agent that is capable of passing the modern Turing test, we need to choose a model that we are gonna build our agent upon. So I thought this is a great opportunity to try out the new Mistral AI model. Now, this model is tiny, 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 tiny. It's a seven billion parameter model. But you know what? It packs a lot of power for that punch. In fact, it's outperforming the Llama 2 13B model. And in fact, they're saying that it even beats in some circumstances the Code Llama 34 billion parameter model. Now, I'm not gonna test that out, but what I'm looking for is a tiny model that I'm able to run on my machine or run on consumer grade GPUs, and then even hopefully in the future be able to run up on the cloud. So I thought this is a great opportunity to try out this new Mistral 7B model. So what we're gonna do on this video is I'm gonna show you how to download the Mistral 7B model, and then we're gonna get it up and running on our local machine. And we'll even do a bit of a comparison between it and Llama 2 7B, and we should be able to see that the Mistral model is slightly performing better, which is great, because it's a smaller model. And then I'm gonna show you it working with Node Llama CPP. Now I could use another hosting and inference library such as VLLM, which is really popular at the moment. In fact, I'll probably do another video on that at some point but I wanna get this working with JavaScript because I think that's gonna be super useful maybe when I'm building this agent network, but we will do a video comparison at some point. Okay, so with that in mind, we're gonna get started. So to download the Mistral 7B model, uh, what I wanna do is I'm gonna go to huggingface.co and I'm gonna go to the bloke and then Mistral-7B instruct v one gguf And if I wanna see the actual specific version to download, again, this is useful because the model versions update. So you click on files and versions and then specifically, we are gonna look at the uh, Q5. So we're gonna look for it as a quantized model. It's a five bit bit quantization, and essentially we're looking for the kind of media model there. So you see there, 7B instruct uh, Q5 K underscore M G G U F. So if I wanna download that, all I really need to do is just uh, click on this link here. Uh, if I wanna download it, uh, rather than doing a sort of regular download, I could use something like MPX pool. So I'll just copy the link address. And then we will now uh, create a models folder. So we'll do uh, make their models. And then I'm gonna do MPX I pool. And then I'm just gonna paste in that uh, URL that I just showed you how to get. And then if we click on that, it is gonna go ahead and download the model into our models folder. And similarly, if I wanted to download the Llama 2 model for comparison purposes, I would use the exact same trick, but this time, again, it's gonna be the bloke, and then I would pick Llama 2 7B GGUF. And again, similarly, I would pick the Llama 2 7B Q5 K underscore M model. So that's the equivalent model. And then again, I can just do an MPX I pull on that. So as you can see now, both of those models are downloaded and are within my models folder. So what we're now gonna do is we're gonna go up a directory, and then I'm gonna create myself a new folder called Node Llama Play Record. And that's where we're gonna create our little Node.js application that's gonna interact with the Node Llama CPP library, which of course will allow us to interact with the Mistral 7B model. To do that, I'm gonna create our Node application just by typing in uh, npm init uh, minus y, which is then gonna create me uh, my sort of package JSON file. So you can see I've got my package JSON there. And of course, I'm gonna use TypeScript. So we're gonna use npm install minus my save dev uh, TypeScript. So we're just gonna install some of our dependencies. Now I will do a TSC uh, in it, but of course I'm gonna be super lazy and I'm actually gonna uh, copy in my own TypeScript configuration. If I open up the TS config for a second, you see it's generated a whole bunch of stuff. I'm actually gonna get rid of almost all of this uh, and I'm just gonna paste in my own configuration. There's a couple of things I want you to kind of see here for a second. The target is ES2022, uh, the module's ES next. I'm using my directors uh, dot forward slash dist. ES module interop is set to true and then module resolution is node. And they are the key settings that I need for this to be able to work for me. So now that we've got TypeScript set up, let's install our Node Llama CPP uh, module. So we'll just do npm install minus minus save Node Llama 
uh, CPP. And you can probably guess that underneath the hood it's using the Llama CPP package. I've already done a video on that before, so you can go and check that out if you want. And then this is really just a kind of Node.js wrapping over the top. If you're something like a Rust developer, there's also a Rust version of this as well, which uh, kind of wraps uh, with Rust bindings over the Llama CPP module underneath. But that's essentially what's happening underneath the hood. So now that that's installed, if we come back into uh, Visual Studio Code, if I open up our package JSON file, you can see Llama Play Record is the uh, name of our, uh, you know, our Node.js application. We'll switch that to index.ts. Uh, you see there's my dev dependency of TypeScript. You see Node Llama CPP is my dependency there. So the last thing that I need to do here is I just want to set my type as module. So we'll just put in uh, type and we will set that to module and that is going to allow us to do things like top level await. So okay at this point, even before writing a line of code, I can actually interact with the model here. So to interact with the model, all I need to do is type in mpx uh, dash dash no, we'll put in node llama uh, cpp and then we want to be in chat mode and I'm gonna specify the model. Now, if you remember before, the model directory is my parent directory and then it's in models. And remember, I called it mistral 7 b instruct v blah, blah, blah. So if I now type that, it's gonna load the model. So even before writing code, it's got this interactive chat mode. So there we go. And then I can start asking some questions. I'm gonna type in something like who is Ada Lovelace? and therefore it will give a response from the model. So as you can see there, it's streaming back an answer. Ada Lovelace was an English mathematician and writer, blah, 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 and the first computer programmer. So as you can see, it's coming back fairly quickly. It's, it's a pretty good model. So there we go, we know that works. Again, I can ask other questions. I could put maybe something like, what is faster, a horse, or a duck, and then it's gonna come back. And in this particular case, it's difficult to say what is faster and how they're being compared, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's got a little bit of thing going on there. That is fine. I'm gonna clear this off, and we're now gonna write some code that it, we can interact with. The first thing we need to do is create our index.ts file. I'm gonna paste in a load of code here. Again, there's not a lot going on in this sense. I'm just importing URL and path so that I can work out what the current directory is for the running application. And then I'm basically gonna calculate my models directory is my current directory plus uh, dot dot, I am going one directory up and then into my models directory. And then finally, I'm gonna calculate what my model path is by joining my models directory and my model name. In this case, the model name is at mistral 7 b instruct, which is the name of the model that we set earlier. So rather than you watching me typing that out, I just thought I'd paste it in. Now this part is where the real code is actually gonna happen. So what I'm gonna do is I, I want to create a new llama model class instance. So I'm just gonna type in const model equals new llama model. And this is all coming from the, the node llama CPP uh, package. So now I just need to set model path is equal to uh, models uh, path, which is what I set up here. So I'm just uh, instantiating that object there. So now that I've got up, I need a context. So we'll say const context equals new llama uh, context. And I'm gonna pass in uh, model, which is what we just uh, created here. So, so far we've created context and the model is the model of our Mistral 7v model. So once we've done that, we need to create a session. So we'll say const session equals new llama at chat session. And we are gonna pass in our context. So we've loaded our model and we've got our session. Finally, what I can do now is I can actually create our prompt. So we'll do const prompt. And we'll put back in our favorite one, which is who is Ada Lovelace. And we'll put a question mark there. And then I'm just gonna console look that out for a second. So we'll say human, that is um, me. And then we'll pass in our prompt. So plus prompt. And then we will execute the prompt. So we'll do const response uh, is equal to, and we're gonna do an await, hence why we set the 
type is module earlier. Now what we're gonna do is use the session, the chat session that we created there, and we'll do session uh, dot prompt, and then we'll pass in our prompt, which is who is Ada Lovelace. And then finally, we just show the results. So we'll type in console.log, and we'll say the AI response is gonna be whatever comes back from the model. Now, if I want to run this, you've probably seen me use things like TS Node in the past. There's a replacement for that, it's called TSX. It runs off a of VS build, super cool. And it just allows us to execute our TypeScript. So I don't wanna install the TSX package uh, globally on my machine. So I'm just gonna do MPX, TSX, and then we'll pass in in .index.ts, which is our TypeScript file. So we'll run that for a second. And you see it's already loaded up all of the uh, fun stuff of the model. You see the prompt there, human who is Ada Lovelace. It's gonna take a little bit of uh, kind of warm up time there. And then you see it's came back with Ada Lovelace with an English mathematician writer known for work on Charles Babbage's mechanical generous purpose computer. And it's pretty fast actually. So if you wanna use JavaScript or TypeScript, run one of these very small models such as Mitchell 7B on your local machine, then the Llama CPP is a really good package for doing that because it's using Llama.CPP underneath the hood. Now it is using my GPU in this case and in another video, we'll try and look at what that performance is uh, there. But you can kind of see that it's a super, super fast model. And if I wanted to, I could compare the performance of the uh, Mistral model to the Alama 7B model. So we'll just put in the uh, Llama 2 7B Q5KM model there. And now, now when I run this, rather than calling Mistral, it's gonna call Llama 2. So if I just uh, run this again, and there it came back with Ada Lovelace with a mathematician and writer, considered to be the first computer programmer because she wrote the world's first algorithm intended for processing on a machine. You see what I mean? I kind of prefer the Mistral 7B response to the Llama too. Now, that's not really a subject, uh, no, yeah. Now that's not really an objective point of view, that's more subjective. But if you look at the benchmarks published, then you see Llama, 2, uh, 7B and Llama 2, 13B, remember that 7B are both losing to Mr. AI. So this is a really performant kind of model. Now, if I wanted to play with the model a little bit more, then I could maybe uh, try a couple of other prompts. So maybe what I could write is something like, who would uh, win at arm wrestling, Pikachu, or Mr. Tickle. There we go, that is the battle of the century there. I'm gonna switch this back to being the uh, Mistral model as opposed to the Llama 2 model. Let's clear this. We'll run it one more time and we'll see who is faster. There you go, it's difficult to say when an arm wrestling between Pikachu and Mr. Tickle as there are fictional characters and their physical abilities are not well defined. Pretty good. However, it's worth noting that Pikachu is a Pokemon with electric powers which could potentially give them an advantage in a physical confrontation. Uh, are you saying that you're gonna just shock Mr. Tickle? Dark. Anyway, you know, I think that's a pretty good answer in that sense. And again, you could just keep running answers back and forward there. If I wanted to time the performance differences between the two models, you will actually see that Mistral is actually a faster uh, model than Llama 27B. Uh, so let's let's time that for a second. So what we will do here is you see uh, who would win at arm wrestling, Pikachu or Mr. Tickle. I think we will keep that as a prompt because I actually in order to do the test, I want to have a sort of warm up there. So we'll say this is a uh, warm up prompt and then we will just log out that warm up prompt and then this response will be the warm up response with the warm up prompt. So now that we've got that, uh, we will, we'll, we'll keep the response coming out as well. So now that we've got that, it'll do warm up the model, we'll get a response. What we will now do is uh, ask it a new prompt and then we'll get timings of that. So the new prompt, we will, let's just uh, copy this again and we will this time use just prompt. Uh, and I think the question we will have is I want something really short with a consistent answer so that I can time. So I'm gonna say answer in one word. What is the opposite of true? So that should come back as false. Uh, we want to pass that in as prompt. 
And then we just want regular response here. We want our prompt to come in and then we will have our regular response coming back. Now, obviously I now want to time this. Now to time this, uh, just before we call the prompt, I'm gonna capture the start time. So we'll say const start time equals uh, date dot now. Uh, so that is captured there and then we'll capture the end time after the uh, response or well, end time equals uh, date dot now as well. And then we'll just put execution time console.log uh, and we'll say uh, execution time is gonna be the uh, end time minus the start time. We'll put that in milliseconds and we'll close off our brackets and then we're good to go. So if I now come back to our console, we run uh, index TS again. It's gonna do our warm up prompt there, which is who would win arm a wrestling Pikachu or Mr. Tickle. And then you see it's came back with that answer and then answer in one word, what is opposite of true AI false. You can see the execution time is 580 milliseconds. Now that's one of the reasons that I set this to a consistent answer of false because obviously the time it takes to uh, infer the results is gonna be based on the number of tokens that it returns. So I want a guaranteed one word. I don't want it to hallucinate. I don't want it to come up with weird and wonderful different things. I want it to be consistent. Same question, same answer, same response, same amount of tokens. So that's done that in 580 milliseconds. And then of course the earlier questions sort of warmed it all up. So you know, it's, it's a kind of clean run there. So 580 milliseconds, that's Mistral, that's pretty fast. Half a second to come back with that, that's pretty cool. So let's just now switch the model to Llama 27B, run it again, and there it goes, the answer. Answer one word, opposite of truths, came back with false. And then you see the execution time is 2239 milliseconds. So as you can see there, the Mistral 7B model, although it's tiny, is super powerful and super fast. And it is coming back in blistering fast time, sort of half a second, okay, that's on GPU. Um, but we'll compare, I guess, that on CPU at some point. But it's running faster than the Llama 2 7B model, which is really what I'm interested in. And it's more powerful than the Llama 2 13B models, go check out those benchmarks. So what we've got is a super compact, super small model that is giving great results, but running at fast time. So I think that has got potential to be the model that I use to solve the modern Turing test. And again, we'll, in our next videos, we'll explore what we're gonna do next and how we're gonna build up that agent. But for just now, I think Mistral is the one that I'm probably gonna go for. So anyway, hopefully this video has been useful for you. Hopefully you understand that Mistral is a great model um, and you can probably see that these models are getting smaller and smaller all the time. Um, so great job, the Mistral AI team, which is a team in France. So it's very cool, it's come out of Europe and it's made up of actually, uh, you know, ex engineers from folks like OpenAI, Google, et cetera. So, Awesome job, and uh, I think we will continue on with that model. Maybe as we do things like fine tuning, we'll discover that that model is not suitable. But I think we will we'll stick with this one for just now. Anyway, hope the video has been useful, and I'll catch you on the next one.